So let's say you're conceptualizing your own failure, you know, and you meditated on it and you come to the conclusion that God forced Cain to, hey, not only have things not been going very well for you, but it's actually your fault. And not only that, you brought it on yourself. And not only that, you knew it all the time. Well, then you might think you'll wake up and fly right, right? You'll get your wings in order and fly right. But there's no reason to assume that at all. And that's not what happens to Cain. That just makes him more bitter, right? And you can understand that if you think about it just for a second. It's like bad enough when something horrible happens to you. But then to have to swallow the additional pill, right? To have to take in the information that you could have done something different. It was avoidable, and you knew it at the time, and you decided to do it anyways. And I think people are in that situation a lot more often than every, anyone is willing to admit. You know, you have that little voice in the back of your head that says, Don't do it. <laughs> and you override it, and you know it's arrogance that makes you override it. It's always arrogance, you know. It always warns you, it's always arrogance. Yeah, I can get away with it. It's like, no you can't. I don't think you ever get away with anything. So, and maybe your experience has taught you different, but my suspicions are it hasn't, and if you think it has, well, the other shoe hasn't yet dropped. So, Cain doesn't take the opportunity to let God's wisdom reorient his character, and that, that could have been the outcome. He could have got down on his knees, so to speak, and said, oh my, oh my God, I've been wrong all along. I've been living improperly. I've been making the wrong sacrifices. Abel deserves everything he has. I got exactly what was coming to me. You know, could I possibly now straighten myself out and, 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 and live in repentance and improve my position? But that's not what he did at all. He said, all right, fair enough. I get it. It's like, I'm going to go after the thing I most admire and I'm going to destroy it. And I'm going to do that despite its cost to me. And I'm going to do that just to spite the creator of being. Well, that's exactly what Harris did in, at Columbine. It's exactly what he says, in fact, in his uncanny writings. It's why the mass murderers always shoot themselves afterwards, not before. Because you might wonder if you're so upset with the structure of being, why you don't just commit suicide in your basement? Why do you have to go out and mass murder before you top it off with a gun to your forehead. Well, you don't make the point as effectively if you just commit suicide in your basement. It's like, well, I, my life means nothing to me. But neither does anyone else's and neither does the structure of being itself. And I'll take all my revenge as much as I possibly can. And then just to show you how little I care, I'll cap myself off at the end. And I would say also, people say all the time, I don't understand how that could happen. It's like, I don't believe that. I think an hour of thought, of real thought, real thought about your darkest feelings about existence itself, illuminates the pathway to that sort of behavior quite clearly. And I think if you, I mean, I might be wrong. Like, I might be a darker person than most. And it's certain. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Well, at least I think there are plenty of people out there who are sufficiently dark to know exactly what I mean when I'm saying these things. And I would also say that if it doesn't leap to your understanding how that pathway might be illuminated, then you need to know a lot more about yourself than you actually know now. Because whatever you might say about someone like Eric Harris, he was a human being too. You know, There's this idea in the New Testament that Christ was he who took the sins of the world unto himself. It's a very complicated idea, but part of it Part of, it, part of it is associated with the idea that he met the devil in the desert as well. To take the sins of mankind onto yourself is to understand that within you dwells exactly the same spirit that commit the atrocities at Columbine or that ran the camps at Auschwitz and to actually understand that that's part and parcel of your makeup and then to take responsibility for it. And I think that in the aftermath of the terrible 20th century, that's what we're left with. We're left with the necessity to take responsibility for the most terrible aspects of ourselves. And that way, perhaps, we can stop those terrible things from happening again. That's all. And that also means, you know, that you don't look for the, you don't look for the, what would you call it, the purveyor of malevolence outside yourself. 
right? It isn't someone else, even though sometimes it's someone else. You know, you know what I mean. It's like there are identifiable perpetrators, but that's not precisely the point. The point is something more like that the proper place for the encapsulation of that malevolence, at least the proper place to start, is within the confines of your own existence, and then perhaps within the confines of your family. And that way you're not a danger to those that you misapprehend as malevolent and evil, because you won't get your aim right to begin with. You'll identify them improperly, and you'll take your revenge in a manner that allows you to omit your own responsibility, to act out your unconscious desire for revenge, and to move the world just that much closer to hell. <laughs>